We are the makers of the first telomere targeting agents. Thio is the lead agent, it's in the clinic now, and we are advancing a pipeline of next generation telomere targeting agents. The efficacy of Thio has proven to be nothing short of extraordinary. We have seen curative effects when used in sequential combination with immune therapy, checkpoint inhibitors, in many tumor types. This efficacy, this efficacy was observed at dose levels 40 times under the maximum tolerated dose. Such a combination of efficacy and safety is unprecedented in cancer treatment. The FDA have reviewed this data and awarded Thio two orphan drug designations, one for HCC, hepatocellular carcinoma, the, the leading histology in liver cancers, 90%, and the other one in small cell lung cancer, the most deadly form of lung cancer. Regeneron are our uh, partner. They uh, provide their drug Liptio, an excellent immune checkpoint inhibitor, uh, under a clinical supply agreement for the phase two go-to-market accelerated approval Thio 101 trial that is going on right now in non-small cell lung cancer. This trial started enrolling uh, a year ago in Australia and is expanding now into Europe and later on comes to the United States as well. The upcoming milestones from this trial are near and to include a few here, dose selection, overall response rates, the disease control rates, duration of response, and progression-free survival. A second phase two trial, also go to market, is called Thio 102. It's a basket umbrella design that is planned to start later this year, and this addresses several different tumor types. And the third, it's a phase two slash three confirmatory and expansion trial, also set to start later. We have multiple telomere targeting compounds in development. Three are already announced, and they started development earlier this year. Here is a look at the pipeline. Up top, you have the Thio 101 trial in non-small cell lung cancer, where we test Thio in sequential combination with Liptio, the one that started enrolling in Australia a year ago, and is on track for filing for accelerated approval in the US by 2025 we are potentially just less than two years to commercial. The second trial, Thio 102, uh, starts with colorectal, HCC, and solid tumors of all types as a signal generation arm. As soon as we see efficacy forming in a certain tumor type, we make it into its own arm. And the third is Thio 103, starting with non-small cell lung cancer and small cell lung cancer, both in first line of therapy, where most patients are. The second generation of telomere targeting agents, the first two, uh, Agent 20 and Agent 12, have been, has started the IND enabling studies about six months ago, are well underway and on track to go to clinic next year. A third one was announced a month ago, will start development as well in the next couple of months. So Thio is short for 6-thio DG or 6-thio 2 prime deoxyguanosine the first telomere targeting agent. It's a small molecule, penetrates the blood-brain barrier, capable of treating brain cancers, eligible for NCE, new chemical entity marketing exclusivity, the strongest you can get in the US and Europe and Japan, has a dual mechanism of action, telomere targeting, but also immunogenic effect, and we have seen complete response with no recurrence in multiple tumor types. The next generation of telomere targeting agents work through a similar mechanism of action, telomere targeting and immunogenic effect. And structurally, some are an evolution of Thio, others are um, new structures. We've tested them all in vitro. We created 84 molecules. We tested them all in vitro and then in vivo, and uh, seven of them proved to be an order of magnitude superior in certain tumor types. So the objective here is to advance to pre-IND development, one agent every 12 months. So cancer, unfortunately, is here with us for a longer time. It is the most dominant of the age-related disease. 
it affects the elderly. And the population aged over 80 is expected to triple in the near future. At age 90, the probability to be diagnosed with a type of cancer is 40%, and to die of it, 20%. By age 100, these numbers double. So yes, we want to live longer, but first, we have to not die of cancer. So Tayo is the only direct telomere targeting agent in development, and it works through a dual mechanism of action. First, telomere targeting. Second, immunogenic effect. So telomere targeting. Here uh, to the left of the slide, in blue, you have the chromosome that contains our DNA, our genetic information, and at the end of the chromosome arms, in orange, are the telomeres. The telomeres are also DNA structures, and they have a very specific function to protect the integrity of the chromosome, in, specifically in the cell division cycle. And they are built by the enzyme telomerase that is present in all normal cells in the first year of life. At approximately age one, telomerase goes away. And at that point, the telomeres have reached their maximum length. And from then on, with each cell division cycle, they lose a little until in the old age, they become critically short, can no longer protect the chromosome, mutations begin to appear with this, the diseases of the old age, including cancer. But in cancer cells, something extraordinary happens. The enzyme telomerase is reactivated. And so the cancer cells regain their ability to lengthen their telomeres, and so, they reach a state of replicative immortality. Just a scientific way of saying they continue to divide, the tumor grows in the aging body. And this is where thio comes in. Thio is picked up by telomerase, placed in the structure of the telomere, creates a faulty structure, the telomere collapses, and the cancer cell dies. This process is very fast and efficient. It happens in 24 to 72 hours. And thio directly kills 70 to 90% of the cancer cells. Then follows its immunogenic effect. Of the telomeric fragments, it forms micronuclei and present that present these fragments to the immune cells, triggering immune responses that are so strong that if you follow thio with an immune therapy, a checkpoint inhibitor, you get complete response, no recurrence, and anti-tumor immune memory. And we have seen this with thio in combination with liptio of Regeneron, with Keytruda of Merck, with Tacentric of Genentech, and the first go-to-market is with liptio of Regeneron in non-small cell lung cancer. About our agreement with Regeneron, this is a clinical supply agreement under which Regeneron provides Liptio, semiplimab, free of charge for our Thio 101 trial in advanced non-small cell lung cancer. This is a very big deal for us. It's, the trial is budgeted for 184 patients, 12 months of therapy, at $15,000 per month. It's a $32 million participation. So separately, we raised along the way $40 million by, by selling shares, but this is non-dilutive. Regeneron do not uh, get a position in the cap table. In exchange, what they do get is uh, development exclusivity in non-small cell lung cancer for the duration of this trial, estimated at two years which means we cannot do a similar trial with a direct anti-PD-1 competitor, such as Keytruda, in non-small cell lung cancer. Any other combination remains open, and any other tumor type remains open. It's a very good deal. So here's a look at our Thai 101 trial. We have, as of the making of the slides, we had 35 patients dosed. We have many more now. We dose about seven to 80 patients per month at this point, and this is accelerating. So this trial is testing thio in sequence with liptio, semiplimab, in non-small cell lung cancer in second line of therapy or later. 
So non-small cell lung cancer is the number one cancer type in the world by mortality and by cells. It's a very insidious disease. It evolves without any signs or symptoms. By the time it's diagnosed, in more than half of the patients, it's so advanced, it's spread to other organs, it cannot be cured with current treatments. Typically, the patients get a targeted therapy if there is a target. 30% of the patients get it. But the others uh, get Keytruda plus minus chemotherapy, and that's it. Keytruda plus minus chemotherapy works a little. 40% response rates, 30% stable disease is best response, 30% nothing. Patients progress after six, seven, eight months. And then they go to chemotherapy, also doesn't work almost at all, or come to our trial. In our trial, we are testing three doses of thiome, 60 milligrams per cycle, 180, and 360. 60 milligrams is the curative dose in mouse translated to humans. The maximum tolerated dose in humans as monotherapy is 2,500 milligrams per cycle. This is 40 times under, unprecedented in oncology. We are testing higher doses as well, 180, 360, just to make sure we don't leave on the table any possible additional efficacy. But even 360 is still seven times under the maximum tolerated dose. So because of this, we started our Part A safety lead-in with the highest dose, 360. The way we give it, we break the dose in three, 120 milligrams per day, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. It's an easy IV, 15 to 30 minutes, just like Liptio or any other checkpoint inhibitor. Then one day of break for the immune activation to take place, that's Thursday. And then Liptio on Friday, dosed as approved. We don't change anything about how Liptio is given. We just add Thio prior to Liptio to make it into a regimen that works a lot better. Cycles are every three weeks. So we concluded Part A, safety lead in, no dose limiting toxicities. And now we are randomizing in part B, where the goal is to select the best of the three doses on the basis of ORR, overall response rates, or disease control rates, and then expand the best dose arm to a regulatory size arm for approval in the US market and others. So we've seen in part A an ex excellent safety profile. We tested the highest dose, 360. And what we have seen is far better than the current standard of care, which is chemotherapy. Chemotherapy is terrible, has an incidence of grade three, four, five side effects, 70 to 80 percent. This requires, grade three requires hospitalization, grade four ICU, grade five is dead. Five percent die because of the treatment. Nothing like this here. This is what we see. Grade one, grade one. The grade one is very mild side effects. And what they are? Fatigue, decreased appetite, blood pressure fluctuation. This is basically how I wake up every morning. So <laughs> there was a report of grade two, a report of grade three. This is uh, that were very quickly resolved. So no dose limiting toxicities. But more importantly, we are now seeing the preliminary efficacy, survival data. The very first two patients enrolled in Part A of the study in Australia continue to be alive. Now, more than 12 months, these slides were make, made a month ago, more than 12 months from treatment initiation. This is huge because both of these patients have advanced stage four metastatic disease and heavily pretreated. They already went through two lines of therapy before coming to our trial and progressed through them, including one with a checkpoint inhibitor. Which is even more extraordinary is they continue to be progression free following their last dose for so many months, now breaking into a year without any new treatment. This is 
Amazing. In real world practice, patients in this situation survive with therapy three to four months, and without therapy, they die in weeks. This is fantastic, much better than the standard of care. The second metric that is, come, that is surfacing as we speak is disease control rate, DCR. At the, at the time of making these slides, we had a data cut of June 23rd. This is almost two months ago now. At that point in time, we had 11 patients with at least one scan for efficacy. Of the 11, nine had disease control. That is 82%. Compared to the standard of care chemo, which is 25 to 35 percent disease control, this is more than double the efficacy of the standard of care so far. Here's the swimmer's plot that looks at the preliminary survival data. We see at the top the Australian patients we talked about, and just about every other patient is passing through the, the average survival for patients who failed two or three lines of therapy we will be reporting um, a major efficacy update soon at uh, ESMO. ESMO is the European Society of Medical Oncology, second largest in the world. Uh, it's going to take place in Madrid this year, October 20th, 24. So the rationale for this trial came from this test we did in 2019, in which we looked at thio in sequential combination with lip thio of Regeneron. No, I'm sorry, with the centric of, of uh, Genentech. And we looked at, this was uh, a mouse model in which, uh, which was uh, conducted in 2019 and published in Cancer Cell in 2020. Cancer Cell is a re very reputable journal. Only the best quality data gets in. So here, graph to the right, you see tumor volume on the vertical ver and days after tumor inoculation on the horizontal. There were only two cycles of administration days five and 10. No, no other therapy was administered. So here you see in gray is the control arm grows very fast without therapy, it's an aggressive tumor. In orange, the atezolizumab monotherapy arm, tecentric, grows just as fast, confirming it's immunologically cold tumor. In green, thio as monotherapy has an important effect. But in blue, the sequential combination of thio and checkpoint inhibitor with an extraordinary effect. Look at the delta between the blue line and the gray line. Huge. 60% complete response. To put things in perspective, Kitruda, in first line of therapy, the market leader in the clinic, has 2% response. Now, we have seen the similar results with uh, thio followed by Kitruda and thio followed by Liptio. So we then followed the 60% complete responses for 70 days. There was no recurrence. 70 days in mouse is like seven years in humans. At this point, so the, the curative threshold is five. At this point, they are cured, but we go above and beyond cure, and we re-challenge with five times more lung cancer cells and no additional treatment. There is no cancer take. Immune memory is in place because of thio. And with this extraordinary premise, we're going to non-small cell lung cancer to the second line of therapy, where the current standard of care is chemo. Chemo is very toxic, grade three, four, five side effects, 79%. Overall response rates are low, 23%. Complete response, zero. Progression-free survival, four and a half months. Overall survival, 10 months, just terrible. For accelerated approval, th the targets are 35% overall response and six months duration of response. And for standard approval, just a 20% improvement over the survival we see here is an approvable drug. A very high probability of success trial. So we have a biomarker of efficacy. It's called TIFS, an acronym, stands for Telomere Dysfunction Induced Foci. These are these little yellow dots you can see the arrows pointing at um, that 
indicate the destruction of the telomeres by thion, they always are appear, they're very well correlated with efficacy, and they reach a maximum after 48 hours uh, from administration with a range between 24 and 72, and their formation indicates the on-target mechanism of action of thion. Thio 102 is our second trial. Uh, to start later this year, it, it has a basket umbrella design, a mountain design, the FDA like this type of design. Um, we, we start with three baskets, colorectal, HCC, and solid tumors, all comers, and in each, three umbrellas, Thio followed by Tecentric, followed by Liptio, and by Kitruda. And the objective is to determine the best combination in each of the tumor types, expand to a pivotal size, and go to market. This trial is starting with nine shots on goal, plus non-small cell, 10 shots on goal for accelerated approval. Most companies at our stage barely have one. We already have 10. And in colorectal, we have seen our best results to date. Always complete response, never recurrence. Even when re-challenged with 10 times more colorectal cancer cells with no additional, no additional treatment, there is no cancer take. Immune memory is in place because of thion. And in colorectal, the situation is even worse. In salvage setting where we are going is also chemo, the standard of care, but response rates are under 2%. Progression-free survival, two months, and overall survival is seven. Another high probability of success trial. We have seen similar results in small cell lung cancer, graph to the left, thio with Pembro. In HCC, graph to the right, thio plus Atezo. These are the data sets that the FDA reviewed when they granted thio the two orphan drug designations. And Earlier this year at AACR, we have seen the best preclinical pre efficacy to date. Thio for the first time in an HCC model, primary liver cancer, with 100% complete response as monotherapy. But when combined with lip thio, we see a very durable response. You see the graph, the upper graph, in green, you have the control arm. In purple, is Liptio, has an efficacy, delays the tumor progression. Thio in red, as monotherapy, complete response, but not all of them sustain in, in the very long term. But the combination, Thio plus Liptio, just flat. 90 days. That's like nine years. When we re-challenged with two times more HCC cells and no additional therapy, there was no cancer take. Even 210 days out, that's 21 years. This is definitive. Tile 103 will also start later this year. This is in first line of therapy, starting as a phase two to become a phase three. We begin with two trials, with two arms, non-small cell in first line with Leptio, and also small cell as an expansion in combination with EP and Tecentric, Atezolizumab of Roche and Genentech as the standard of care. And then we expand to pivotal phase three for full approval. So from an intellectual property perspective, uh, the goal is new chemical entity marketing exclusivity. The strongest you can get, most robust, gives seven years to market on the market in the US, 10 years, Europe, Japan, and other markets, beginning with the timing of approval. And this is supported by a very robust and growing patent portfolio. We have 17 patents, five are issued, others are pending. The most recent is Tile as an immunogenic treatment strategy in sequential combination with checkpoint inhibitors, good until 2041. So our management team is very experienced. I'm a physician by my first training and businessman by my second, and have worked all my career in oncology, in pharma and biotech, about 50-50 commercial and medical. And I had the privilege to work on some extraordinary oncology compounds, some of them paradigm shifts in their day, such as uh, Nexavar at uh, Bayer Oncology. 
Next of all was the first tyrosine kinase inhibitor in its day and uh, indicated for kidney cancer and uh, HCC, where we are going with Tile. Next of all, picked at a, bi a billion dollars a year. Then Tarsiva at Astellas for non-small cell lung cancer, where we are also going with Tile. Three billion a year. Extendi for prostate cancer, now at five billion a year. But not one of them had such a curative premise going into the clinic as Tile does nor such an extraordinary safety margin of 40x. Here's a look at the cap table. We can come on this later. The investment opportunity, I'm going to click through the slides a little bit faster. But here's a, here's, a, here's a look at the comparable companies. The markets, as you know and track, are very depressed right now. Our market cap is low. When you look at some of the companies, uh, comparable companies, that with their valuations after they show their duration of response data, where we will be next year, this is what we see, between 0 0.7 and $4 billion. A, a, a major multiple from, from where we, we sit today. Turning Point Therapeutics is a particularly interesting case because this is a company based in San Diego that were acquired by Bristol Myers Squibb last year for $4.1 billion. The lead agent of Turning Point, Repotrectinib, is a track targeting agent. Track mutations in lung cancer, 1 to 2% of patients. Tio works in all cells that are telomerase positive. In non-small cell lung cancer, that's 85%. We will be there. So we have a number of major inflection points ahead of us. The first one is the, the IND filing. Uh, the second one, which enables us to open studies in the US as well, which is uh, filed. The second one is uh, are the preliminary efficacy data from TIO 101, which will be at ESMO this year in Q4. Then we open TIO 102, TIO 103, and next year we have progression-free survival, duration of response, other major inflection points coming from TIO 101, with filing for US approval in 2025 and then accelerated approval in the US. In parallel, we develop the next generation of telomere targeting agents, with the lead being about three to four years uh, after Tayo going to commercial.